Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to talk about mulberries. Um, I'm going to go over the different types, the different species of mulberries. Uh, we're going to talk about flavors. We're going to talk about different varieties, different colors of different mulberries. Um, we're going to talk about how to grow them, basic care, uh, really just doing a general overview of mulberries. Um, I personally think that they are the most ornamental fruiting plant that I grow. Um, I think that they're misunderstood here in America. I think uh, because you can't really find them in the stores, they're really well worth growing in your backyard. Um, they also make a pretty good backyard tree. Um, of course, some of them get pretty large, but uh, for the most part, they're a great ornamental tree. And the fruit is actually really good, um, contrary to what most people believe. I'd also recommend that... Um, you guys just grow them because they're they're exceptionally adaptable and they are almost problem free in my yard. The only thing I have to worry about is the birds, which actually does create a nice little set of problems there. But for the most part, they're they're really easy to grow. They're very vigorous. The fastest growing tree that I have. Um, really, really simple. I want to mention though before we get into all that about mulberries and and more. I just released a website, guys. I just created this. It's rossratty.weebly.com. If you guys are interested, go check out the website, bookmark it. We're doing a nice little blog here on the homepage, and this is quite different than the other forms of social media that I'm on as well. You know, it's this is different than YouTube, different than my podcast, different than Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So go here if you're interested in this longer form content that um, I think you can get, is a bit more infor informative that way. So, you know, go to the website, check it out. It's definitely in the description of this video. Um, I want to mention, though, here's my tree that I, um, that I have in my backyard. Actually, on the, the west side of the house, it only gets about seven hours of light here. And this tree is exceptionally vigorous. This year it grew um, 12 feet uh, minimum. It grew about a foot a week in the warmer parts of the year. I was shocked. I was worried. Um, I was thought I thought it was going to take over the the entire house. Um, you know, this is Illinois Everbearing. This is the variety that I really recommend to most people here in my climate. Uh, it's exceptional overall. The fruit quality is great. The size is pretty good, um, and it's productive. It's a really great mulberry. Um, now, I want to talk about really quickly because it's so vigorous. I want to talk about just the general care that you have to give these mulberries. Um, for me, pruning is a bit of a, it's not a challenge, it's its more of a joy. I don't mind pruning my tree every year, but if you're going to have a mulberry that's as vigorous as this, you need to prune it every year um, to some extent. You need to figure out some kind of way of growing it, training it. Um, it's really important, um, just like any of our trees, to be honest with you. Now, one of the methods that I've used in, the, in uh, this year, actually, for the first time, it's called pilarding. And this is where you chop the tree back to a certain height. And every year you do that, every single year, leave a few buds, and that way it gets slightly taller and taller every year. But for the most part, you control the height, really keep the plant from getting too out of control. Um, the problem by doing this is that you're really limiting the fruit that you get. So if you're going to do this, uh, because the mulberry fruits on last year's wood, so the buds that form out of last year's wood, that's where the mulberries will be. So it's a bit of a challenge to control these. I've also bent the limbs down at a young age and let them really get a more open center to it. And that way it kind of forms more limbs closer to the ground. I've also seen people, um, if you see my tree here, these upward shoots here are growing to the sky and then these shoots down here are actually growing towards the ground and this creates a really nice um, weeping habit and controlling the the height of the plant so you can prune off all these shoots that are growing up and leave the ones that are going down and and over time your tree will actually form these downward limbs that will fruit for you every single year so there's certainly ways around it um, for me Pruning is key, but also selecting the right variety. Another variety that I'm going to be choosing this year is actually called Girardi Dwarf Mulberry. This is one of the very few, maybe only 
a handful that exist in the world that actually are dwarf, true dwarf mulberries. And Girardi is actually um, similar to Illinois Everbearing, whether that's an Alba or an Alba Rubra hybrid. We're going to get into that in just a second. I'm not sure, but the point is they're very similar. It's very similar to those and mulberries that were performed well in my area. But it's dwarf, and the reason why it's so dwarfed is because the fruiting, the plant will fruit so much that all the energy in the tree is focused on that fruit and less so on the growth. So it really does end up being a six foot by six foot tree, really great for kids. Again, very ornamental. Easily you can net this, and that way the birds won't be uh, invading your tree and getting all your fruit. Um, I have a really hard time netting this Illinois Everbearing because the tree just grows straight through the nets and I don't get any of the fruit um, or because I, I have to take off the net, uh, destroy the net. I mean, it really just becomes a problem. So, But other than that, they really have no problems. You know, they're very drought tolerant. One of the most drought tolerant trees in the world. Um, quite exceptional, actually, that nothing bothers this tree other than some disease on certain species and um, really just the birds. So a wonderful thing to have, I think, in your backyard. Um, let's talk about the different species of mulberry here. So we have Morris alba, Morris rubra, Morris macrora, and Morris nigra. And the four of them are the most common. There's also hybrids of those as well. And it's very difficult to know what your mulberry exactly is, what species your mulberry exactly is. The problem lies in the genetic testing. It's really difficult to get affordable genetic testing to send these plant materials to someone who will test them genetically and find out exactly what the species name of these plants are. Um, so there's a lot of confusion that goes around these different species, but there indefinitely is, or there definitely is four different species here. Um, but there's a lot of hybrids, like I said, and a lot of this information, even though, or a lot of these varieties, even though they may say they're a Morris nigra, they probably are not. So you really have to take things with a grain of salt when you're choosing particular varieties. But Morris Alba is the one that I highly recommend, at least for my climate. It's really great, disease resistant, um, can handle uh, partial shade, you know, it poor soils, drier soils, minimal care, minimal fertilization. I mean, the pH can even be messed with, uh, the elevation doesn't matter. You can literally grow this anyway. It's so well adapted. I would find one though that's well adapted to your area. Um, like for me, my Illinois Everbearing, it has Illinois in the name. So obviously it was found in Illinois. Illinois being a similar cold climate to my own it's certainly going to be one that's well adapted to my area. Um, now these, most of these are black mulberries. They'll go from red to black. You can pick them when they're red and they're more acidic that way. The black, they, the more um, black they get, the sweeter they are. But there's also uh, white mulberries like this one here, Beautiful Day is a well-known uh, white mulberry uh, within Morris Alba. And the white mulberries are non-staining. It's another big reason why these fruits get a bad rap. They're very sweet, less acidic. Um, and you can dry them and they actually get some kind of honey inside and they really end up being fantastic. Um, I definitely want myself a white mulberry at some point, but again, we need to find dwarf varieties to make them a little bit more um, easier to maintain. So we have the Morris Alba here, definitely the ones I recommend. The next species here is Morris Rubra. This is really not all that different than Morris Alba. There's very small minor characteristics between them, but for the most part, you don't find these. True Morris Rubras are very uncommon. Um, they're becoming less, they're becoming more rare, you know, um, but the characteristics are pretty similar to an Alba. They can be grown in a pretty wide variety of climates goes grows well in partial shade exact you know prefers a more moist soil though you know wide range of soil types survive drought excessive flooding gets to 70 feet you know it's also very vigorous um, this one fruits along the branch rather than in kind of clusters like the Morris Alba does you know it's just 
it's um I think it's also native to North America. I'm not entirely sure where Morris Alvarez native to, but you know these things have been hybridized together over time, and actually have formed a whole bunch of varieties that um, have hybridized together and have formed probably superior in some ways superior varieties like Illinois Everbearing is one um, here's a whole list of them right here that are supposed to be hybrids again genetic testing is really important with this kind of thing um, so that's kind of what covers the majority of the mulberries that I kind of find in my area the next uh, most common mulberry you're gonna find is the Morris Macrora and this is the mulberry that's pretty common in the Middle East uh, they're longer mulberries you can very easily tell them apart from other mulberries because of the length they're like two to four inches in length quite long um, here's a photo actually right here of a Pakistan mulberry Pakistan's probably the most well-known variety within Morris Macrora and the, the most well-grown are the most commonly grown this one does really well in a whole host of climates as well except that it's not very hardy and all the macroras are not very hardy at all um, you know they're very similar though to the albas and the rubras in that you can also have or maybe not the rubras but you can definitely have some albas that are white you can also have some macroras that are white here is a white one right here called Sharampur Lokal this is a white macrora pretty interesting but again they're not very hardy and you'd be hard-pressed to grow them below zone 8 or even in a cold zone 8 they may not survive very similar characteristics and other aspects though to the other two species of mulberry they can withstand intense heat though and humidity they're the most disease resistant of the mulberries people call it the king of mulberries now I have to say that the Morris nigra here is the fourth species but this is probably the king of mulberries because it is highly regarded as the most flavorful mulberry that exists and of course there's different varieties within Morris nigra you can find them all over the world etc but they're very difficult to grow because they're very dwarfed um, they're also very disease um, susceptible and they're not very cold hardy so that really limits where you can grow them right they can't be in a cold place and they can't be in a humid place so the only where you can really pretty much grow them is somewhere that's zone 8 and above that is a drier place so you're talking about California you know maybe parts of um, Arizona for sure you know Nevada um, warmer places in Texas that are not very uh, humid you know there's very limited areas in the in the country that you can grow these things so but apparently it's worth it uh, because of their flavor they're a bit smaller in size the mulberry itself and they grow very um, densely they have very compact nodes um, they don't grow very quickly um, and they you know again they're very disease susceptible so if you are gonna grow them in a place like me because I'm growing them in a container. I have one of them in a, in a container to see what all the fuss is about. If you're going to do that, you know, um, certainly try to keep it in a place where it's not going to get too much rain, too much disease. Um, inevitably, it may be a waste of time for those people, but generally it is actually pretty easily to grow in a container because of its dwarf nature. It doesn't get too big. Um, it goes deciduous, so you can put it along with your fig trees and just stick it in the greenhouse or stick it in your garage. You know, it has no problem overwintering um, that I've found. So, um, yeah, those are the four different species of mulberry. Um, I guess we want to talk about a couple varieties here, and then I'm going to let you guys go because we kind of talked about the flavor. We talked about how to grow them. We talked about, you know, the general maintenance. Um we talked about the species I would say that if you're looking for a variety you certainly want to go with something that is you know proven to be well adapted to your particular climate Illinois Everbearing certainly is that you know Pakistan Mulberry I've seen this do all, all do really well in drier warmer climates all over the place you know this one right here as an example Ranger Ken or Pandora's box or Valdosta or 
Wasissa, you know, all these different mulberries here from Just Fruits and Exotics, these have been found locally, and I'm sure that they're well adapted to that particular climate. Um, the White Beauty mulberry I hear is good. The Beautiful Day mulberry I hear is really good. Uh, there's also contorted mulberries that you guys can pick up that have a little bit more of an ornamental appeal. There's some that are more weeping, that naturally weep. You know, again, nothing is going to really compare to a variety that has been cultivated and selected for years. Um, if you're growing yourself a seedling, it's pretty much a waste of time. Um, you know, you can obviously get a decent seedling if you do this as many you know enough times but I've had seedling mulberries myself and they're completely tasteless um, I don't know if we mentioned this in the video the, uh, the beginning of the video but the fruit itself is actually very um, very good you know it tastes a lot like mulberry or it tastes a lot like blackberries and raspberries but mulberries are really their own fruit right there are they are mulberries for a reason um, you know uh, I personally think they're better than both raspberries and blackberries, but there are certainly, I think, some blackberries that are that have astounded me, and I could say that's really close. Um, I also really like raspberries, but I think I like blackberries and mulberries more than I do raspberries, so I'm a bit, a bit biased. They're very difficult to protect from the birds. Um, you know, I can go on and on about these things, but in general, you really should just grow them. And I hope this kind of helped you guys become more aware of the different types of mulberries that exist. You know, the different flavors, the different colors. Um, there really is a wide variety within mulberries. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Um, I'll catch you all for the next one and see you tomorrow. Take care.